Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fire Up Florida. We're firing it up today as I'm talking with Tommy Hutton, a longtime Miami Marlins broadcaster. First of all, Tommy, let's talk about the opportunity that they get to see Shohei Otani, first of all. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's one of those uh, events, and uh, hopefully the fans will show up tonight. I think it's one of those events as a, as a hitter, you, you have to prepare for what Otani has, the pitches he has, slider, curveball, splitter, good fastball. But you have to kind of take out of your mind that it's this guy Shohei Otani who's doing all these things, who's also going to hit in the game tonight, and he's, he'll be the DH as well. So you have to prepare, but you have to kind of put the other stuff out of your mind. You know, I know you've been around the game a long time, and I mentioned this to Don Manningly during our media availability, but some of the guys that really are event type of guys are Mark Fidrich over the years, and of course, Fernando Valenzuela. Where do you put Shohei Otani in that discussion? We know that he's a hybrid player that does an awful lot, and he's a player that this generation has seen, but a lot of them in the new generation have not. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, the two guys you mentioned certainly uh, drew a lot of attention, the Bird and, and uh, Fernando out in Los Angeles. Uh, but this is another level, only, only because he hits as well. And the interesting thing, as he comes into this game, he's uh, on a roll, both hitting and pitching. And so it's one of those things, I mean, I talked to uh, Mark Gubazal, a longtime uh, major league pitcher and all-star. He does the TV with the Angels, and he said, the thing about Otani is extremely creative. And so you never know exactly what he's going to come at you with. And he's amazed at how he can recover after pitching and recover the next day and DH. Yeah, that's remarkable. All right, I'm going to be going to the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, in a few weeks. Oh, so, okay. so I've got to ask you this question. We'll talk about our manager first. Let's talk about the job that Don Manningly has done during the 2022 season. I know the team struggled for a while. Now we're hovering around the 500 mark. A win against the Angels puts the Marlins at 500. Talk about the job that Don Manningly has done in 2022. You know, he 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 keeps keeps things together. Uh, he he has a way. Not, not how I can do it. <laughs> he has a way of just handling the good and the bad. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. And uh, uh, there, hey, there are moves that you can question any manager in the major leagues. And are there moves that you question with Donnie? Absolutely. But as far as his uh, keeping the players together, I always say if, if you're a player and you don't like playing for Don Mattingly and there's something wrong, and I also thought that if you were a player for Don Mattingly, you should be made to watch the documentary that was done on Donnie Baseball. You should watch that. Would you assess the way that he's handled things through, not only during the pandemic that we had to deal with circumstances like uh, uh, unbelievable, and I saw how he managed the team during then, that he's definitely the right manager for the Miami Marlins? I think so. I, I think he certainly is. You have enough young guys. You have some veteran guys whom he can relate with. He's patient. Uh, with the young guys, with the young pitchers as well. And by the way, Scott, when you go to Cooperstown, you better stop and say hi to Jim Cott for me. Okay, well, I'll do it. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm going in August, so I'm not going then. So I don't know if Kitty will be there. But I, all right, no, but you you know, Tom, you do a great job giving me segues, for God's sake. I've talked about it on numerous podcasts of mine, and that's this, okay? I've hit everybody. I'm going to hit you with it as well. Does Don Manningly belong in the Hall of Fame? It's a, it's a borderline call. Uh, I would love to put him there. Uh, I don't know if he does belong there, though. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. And I would love to see him there. 12, 15 years had he played, no doubt. And I think the, the injury and the, the time he played, the time frame that he had incredible years. And, and a few of those years, three of those years, 87, 88, and 89, I was a broadcaster with the Yankees. So I got to see him up close, and uh, he had some incredible years. I'd have to say probably no. All right, but then I'm going to counter back with you All that right. when I look at guys like Kirby Puckett that had stats comparable, right. but the only thing different between Puckett and Manningly was the fact that Don Manningly didn't see the postseason a whole lot, and Kirby Puckett had that thing called a couple World Series rings. You ever heard of them? Okay, so do you think that that might be a borderline case where the Veterans Committee or whoever votes – at some point or another, we'll get Don Mattingly in. Yeah, I think I think certainly as time goes on, and if we see more guys go in who maybe don't have the the years or the numbers that Donnie has, I think that's certainly a possibility. 
Uh, but my counter to that is, does that mean Mike Trout's not a Hall of Famer because he's only played in three postseason games? Well, you've had a chance to see Miguel Cabrera. What are your thoughts about Miguel Cabrera? <laughs> Yeah, he, he's unbelievable, and he's doing some pretty good things at a later age. He's the last guy that won a triple crown. Unbelievable. He's a no-brainer. No no-brainer. And my last question here, I know that the Marlins pitching has always been their strength all year, and I've always said on a lot of my shows, Tommy, that if their bats catch up, this team could be very dangerous. Do you feel that as we approach the second half of the season that what I'm saying is pretty close to being accurate? Yeah, I think the bats have to catch up, but I think also they need uh, a little more consistency and better pitching from Trevor Rogers, who's pitching tonight. I think they need that, and, and hopefully they can get that and, and maybe get a couple more guys uh, healthy as the second half gets underway. But certainly the bats are important. Well, you've got Sandy Alcantara, who to me, Tommy, is an old school guy that does throw complete games, and you got Pablo Lopez. So, uh, you know, I guess one thing that came to mind, give me your thoughts on those particular pitchers. Well, they're fantastic. There's no, no question. And I think Sandy ought to be the starting pitcher in the All-Star game. Uh, without question, uh, but you need more than two starters. Right. And he can make a good case for the Hall of Fame, at the, uh, not the Hall, well, Hall of Fame, yeah, that Cy Young Award is what I'm thinking, at, at the current pace. Yes, yeah. Well, I, I mean, you look at all his numbers, they blow everybody's away because he's thrown more innings than anybody. He's thrown more pitches than any major league pitcher this year. All right, well, Tommy, I appreciate you giving me the time to, uh, this afternoon, and I enjoy your friendship, but more importantly, you're a great colleague, and I look forward to catching up with you later. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Fire Up Florida. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Scott. All right, take care. Thank you.